What is good everyone? Tyler here. Welcome back to another video. I know I'm a bit late on this, but we've got a b -b -b breaking news announcement and release from OpenAI that affects GPT-4, GPT-3.5, and a couple other things. Now the real meat and potatoes of this announcement is function calling, which is very, very cool. And it really affects a lot of the things I'm working on and helps make them a little bit better. But let's get into the uh, maybe the overlooked things on this release, which I think are amazing. And then I'm gonna go ahead and jump over the example of function calling, and then I'll do my own example. So what are some things in this new release? We've got changes to GPT-4 and 3.5 Turbo. More specifically, GPT-3.5 Turbo got a 16K context window, okay, which is enormous. Four times bigger than before, is that right? I think so. 70, this one's nuts, okay. I know it, you know, embeddings are maybe not the hottest thing, but they're very, very useful, especially for people building chat models or SaaS products that use chat models and they need to allow users to create embeddings. They just decrease their costs by 75%, which is crazy. You know, OpenAI is going sort of like the standard oil route of, of AI and that they're just making everything so cheap, it's pretty cool. 25% cost reduction on the tokens for GPT 3.5 Turbo, which was already so inexpensive. I use 3.5 for a lot of my use cases where I don't need GPT 4, and it just got 25% cheaper. Okay, now with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at function calling, which affects a lot of the stuff that I work on. And we're gonna look at their example, and then I'll do a slightly customized example. So what are they saying that this is? Okay. Developers can describe functions to GPT and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to call those functions. Okay, so really to wrap your head around this, just imagine that you write some text and you have a function, right? A utility function you want to use. And, GP, and they've tuned their models to basically figure out how to take that text and create sort of structured inputs to those functions. Okay, so some of the use cases they've had here, and let's take a look at what they say here. These models have been fine-tuned, which I mentioned, to detect when a function needs to be called and to respond in JSON that adheres to the function signature. Very powerful. So you can do things like create chatbots that answer questions by calling external tools, convert queries such as email to see if she wants to get coffee next Friday to a function call called send email that has two arguments. And basically it'll take the text and turn it into arguments for that function. Now there's a couple other examples here that you can take a look at and I encourage you to. But basically the, the gist of it is some changes have been made to the completions endpoint, more specifically functions and function call sort of fields have been added where you can pass in stuff to make this work. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Hopefully you guys can see this. The things that the steps in order to do this should hopefully help you understand this because at first it could be a little bit confusing, you maybe think this does something that it doesn't, but it's pretty simple. It takes the text and it converts it into arguments in a structured way that you can pass into a function that you've created or maybe one that, that doesn't exist, right? So you can describe functions to GPT and have the model intelligently choose to output a JSON object containing arguments to call those functions. It's a mouthful. Pause it if you have to, try to wrap your head around this. The chat completions API does not call the function. Instead, the model generates JSON that you can use to call the function in your code. So there's a few steps to make it work and we're gonna go over them. But just keep in mind that you're generating JSON that you're gonna to use to call the function in your code. Here are the steps. First, you're gonna call the chat completions endpoint with the user query and a set of functions defined in the functions parameter. Remember, that's one of those parameters that they added, functions and function call, I believe. The model can choose to call a function and if so, the content will be stringified JSON adhering to your custom schema. Then the part you're gonna parse the string into JSON in your code and call the function with the arguments provided, if they exist, right? That's a caveat, you have to check for that. And then call the model again, call the model again by appending the function response as a new message. And here you're gonna use the completions API from before without the other two parameters and let the model summarize the results back to the user. Okay, so obviously the best way to, to see how this stuff works is to illustrate it in an example. And again, this is not original, this is straight from their docs, lifted from their docs. Go ahead and take a look at those, it may help, but I'm not really explaining it well. So this is the example that they've given us, and it's a dummy example, right? So it says, get current weather, 
and it has two parameters, location and unit. Get the current weather in a given location, and they've got a Python dictionary that just returns a dictionary, okay? There's no, this function just returns a dictionary. There's no API call, which is ideally what you would use this for, and we're gonna show that in the next example, a custom example, but really here it's just a static Python dictionary, okay? So whenever this is gonna dump, it's just gonna dump the weather info. All this stuff is basically hard-coded, okay? This location is gonna be passed into here and it's gonna spit this out, okay? Now here, and remember, you're gonna need your open API key, obviously. Open AI key, sorry. I've then, I defined it twice. This was unnecessary. I could probably delete this block here. So get the current weather. We've looked at that. Now they've got this function, run conversation. And here in this run conversation, you'll notice some differences in how this chat completion create endpoint looks. So we've got the model parameter. We've got messages. This is nothing is new here. Here we've got the user input and then functions. Now this is new and you can pass in a couple here. There's only one. It's an array of functions. The name of it, get current weather. I don't believe this has to match this, but it, it maybe helps because remember, this is all gonna end up in the context of that you're giving your model, right? So it's all gonna end up in that space and the more descriptive you are, the better. So description, get the current weather in a given location. Now this may sort of remind you, if you're familiar with Langchain, may remind you of agents and tools and how with the Langchain, with the React framework, it figures out which tool to use, right? So. And actually, you know, this is great because it simplifies and maybe allows you to remove a lot of that lang chain code that you may not need, which may be bloating your application. So here you sort of describe it and then you give the parameters. Okay, so in, in our function, get current weather, we've got location and unit. And here you tell them which parameters those are, give it a bit of a description so that the, remember, again, goes into the context. The more information you give the model, the better decisions it can make and the better the output's gonna be. And then unit, which was the second parameter here. Now, required, okay, here's a, this is something you can tell you want, this is a function argument that you have to pass in, okay? And here you can sort of see that here we've given it a default argument to unit, so it's gonna default to that. But location doesn't have a default argument, so it's required. Now here, function call auto. There's gonna be times when you don't want the model to basically use the function or you may want it to use an explicit function, in which case you could give it the name here if I'm not mistaken, or if you don't want it to use any of them, you would just put none, okay? Now, great, so we've done step one here, okay, which was call the model with the user query and a set of functions defined in the functions parameter, okay? That's right here. Now, the response you're gonna get is this message and I'm going to pull out, now hold on, what I wanna do here is I wanna create a new cell here and just see what this output is. Okay, message run conversation. Okay, so we can take a look at the message and we can see that this differs slightly from what our old completions used to look like where content was actually, if I'm not mistaken, content was a bunch of text. Now it's null, but we've got this thing here, function call, which has arguments and name, okay, the name of our function. And you can see this JSON, or actually it's probably a string, it is a string, that sort of has the information pulled out of the user query, okay? So location, Boston, Massachusetts, right from our user query. What is the weather like in Boston? It's sort of figured out that those are the arguments that we wanna put into the get current weather function, okay? Now, let's go ahead and move on. So that was just to show you guys that. Now message, okay, we've got the message here. Now, boom, we've got this object here. Then what we're gonna do is ask the next step, okay? Does the model actually want to call the function, okay? Boom, does the model wanna call the function? If message.get function call, which we do have, parse all this stuff out, use it now in the next step, which is to Pass the JSON secret, code, call the model by appending the function response as a new message and let the model summarize the results back to the user, okay? So that's what's going on here. We're going to take all the stuff we got from the previous call, sort of inject it here, and then make a normal create call, a normal call to the chat completion create endpoint with the, with the user query, okay? Which is what is the weather like in Boston? And you can see that'll then tell us the weather in Boston is currently sunny and with a temperature of 72 degrees. Now, if you'll recall, 
this was not an API call, okay? This was just data that came back from the function that we created, it was hard-coded. Now, if you'll recall, this is not data that's going out and being retrieved anywhere. This was hard-coded in our get weather function, if you recall that. Let's go ahead and take a look. We actually put 72 degrees here. This is a object that never changes. Now, this is not very useful, of course. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a custom example where we actually want to use an API and get information live or that's actually real and not hard-coded. So what I did is I wanted to get some stock information, okay? So I used an API called Alpha Vantage, and I got a API key, and I put a symbol in there, okay, NVIDIA. Now, this is the stock quote, and this is actually hard-coded. Now, the symbol really should ideally go here, but whatever. It's, it's going to be passed in either way because I'm actually just going to use it to call NVIDIA. So you could have done this with Apple or whatever, and it just changed this parameter. I just didn't for this example. I'm going to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. So run conversation is our main function, okay? And here we have step one. Call the model with a user query and a set of functions defined in the functions parameter. That's what we did here. Okay, so my function was get stock quote. We're going to put it in the functions parameter, get stock quote, give it some information. Again, a lot like using agents and tools where we're going to decide which one to use get the info about a stock price, sort of describe those properties of, of the parameters. It's a string, the name of the ticker, and then the, the description of what it is. So here it's a ticker symbol, for example, Apple. And it is required, okay? And again, we're gonna use auto because we do want it to use that function. Then we're going to grab the message from what comes back, check if there is a function call in that, in that object that comes back, which there is gonna be, and then just call it again. That was step number four. Call the model by appending the function response as a new message and let the model summarize the results back to the user. So that's what we did here. We take all of that and then once again, give me some information about NVIDIA stock price. And this should go, it's all one cell. And here we go. Okay. As of the last trading day, June 15th, which is today, the stock price of NVIDIA is 426.53. It opened at 426.15 and reached a high of 432. Now, very cool. So really all we did was describe in natural language what we wanted. OpenAI figured out, because they, they fine-tuned or they trained it to do this, figured out what you wanted to grab from that query and plug into your special function. Isn't that awesome? I, I, I personally think that's very, very cool. Now, of course, we know that if we go into chat GPT, it's not going to know this information, right? It's going to give us that as an AI model. I can't do this. So let's go ahead and check that out. So I had asked it to give me some information about NVIDIA stock price. And of course, I apologize, but as a language model, I don't have this real time data. Okay. It doesn't know. It can't go out and grab it. There's probably plugins for it. I'm not sure. I haven't used that. I probably shouldn't make a video on that. But anyway, it just doesn't get it like we could do now with the new fine tuning that they've done to the OpenAI GPT 3.5. You have to use the updated model in GPT 4 and you create your own functions. You have your user or you type in the text and it figures out which arguments to pass in. I think that's awesome. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you mess around. Let me know in the comments if I, you know, if, if you find any cool use cases and what you guys think and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.